All right, so we skipped one problem. Let's look at this problem <clears throat> right here. We've got a 30 kilogram disc. Uh, it's pin supported at its center. Uh, determine the angle through which it must rotate to attain an angular velocity of two radians per second starting from rest. It's acted on by constant couple moment. The spring is originally unstretched and its cord wraps around the rim of the disc. Now, if we weren't in, we know we need to use work energy method. We know we're going to use conservation of energy method. Uh, but if we weren't in this and we were trying to decide what method to use, uh, generally when we're looking at velocities <clears throat> and especially springs and things like that, uh, conservation of energy is a good method as opposed to when we're looking for accelerations and forces. <clears throat> um, then um, maybe free body diagrams would be a good method. But anyway, conservation of energy is a good method. <clears throat> so potential plus kinetic plus non-conserved work equals the final potential plus kinetic. Potential could have gravity and spring. Kinetic could be linear and rotational. U could be force or moment. So I kind of, now <clears throat> it's like every single term has two terms that it could be. And if you want to do like me, um, I, I like to go ahead and write the whole equation, right? The potential energy due to spring is 1 half kx squared. Potential energy due to gravity is mgh. Uh, the l linear kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. The rotational kinetic energy, 1 half i omega squared plus fd plus m theta. Remember, it's not always fd. It's not always m theta. But if they're constant forces or constant moments, <clears throat> then yes, you can write Fd and M theta. And then all of this energy at the final position. Now, you probably didn't want to write this whole thing. You probably know that a lot of these are going to be zero. Okay. Uh, now, the next thing I do is I like to write, hey, remind myself, that's the height of point G, the velocity of point G, the omega of G, the height of G. Oh, I guess I did that over here for some of those. These four are initial. These four are final. These two are neither initial or final. Those forces go from initial to final. They, they, they act all the way in this problem. The moment is acting at initial and final. <clears throat> so don't think about that as like the initial force or the final moment or anything like that. All right, so now I think I'm ready to break this up into bite-sized pieces and really um, um, think about this. All right, 30 kilogram disc is pin supported at its center. Determine the angle through which it must rotate to attain a fi final angular velocity right there of two radians per second starting from rest. All right, starting from rest, then both the linear and kinetic energy would be zero. It's acting on by a constant moment of five. Springs really, okay. Originally unstretched. That's kind of what I was looking for. Okay. Originally unstretched. So originally that X is zero. <clears throat> this is the MGH and the f initial and the MGH final. Now, <clears throat> sometimes it might seem like you have two or you have different objects in here <clears throat> but we only have one object that has mass so this is the mgh of the object that has mass <clears throat> don't have to worry about the height of the spring or, or the the, the, the spring is massless so it does not have any mgh so you, you need to do the mgh for anything that has mass anything that has a center of gravity where is the center of gravity of this disc that has mass it's right there it starts right here and it ends right here. Well, let me just call that my, my zero. It's, it starts and ends right there. All right, this equation is getting a lot more manageable, isn't it? <clears throat> okay. Is there any FD? Is there any external force that goes a distance? So I'm looking for, like, forces that are drawn on here. Also ropes. All right. But not, not, not springs. We take the energy, we take springs into account with 1 half kx squared. <clears throat> so I'd say there is no external FD, but there is an M theta. All right, so here we go. I'm starting to write back. Look at that. All of those went to zero <clears throat> except for M theta. So the moment is 5 Newton meters. The theta, I think that's what I'm asking for, kind of the angle through which it must rotate. Theta. So that's my unknown. 
<clears throat> okay, on the right hand side, I've got one half k x squared x. What is the stretch of that spring? <clears throat> um, I don't know. I mean, it it is it is getting stretched, isn't it? I don't know that. <clears throat> Hey, velocity of point G, point G is not moving left, right, up, down. So point G is zero. But it is rotating. <clears throat> so this would be one half I. What is the I? Did it give me a uh, rate of gyration? No. So we can assume this, this is a uniform cylinder. And a uniform cylinder is one half M R squared. One half M R squared. So now let's be careful. Let's look out here. I've got a one half. Before I get to the I, the I is one half m r squared, and then omega is two squared right there. Okay, that's good, <clears throat> but I'm not quite there. That equation has two unknowns. The unknown angle that it's rotating through, and the unknown stretch of the spring. Is there something I can think of outside of this equation? Maybe another equation. Are are those related? Are those related? Let's let's visualize this. <clears throat> the spring is getting stretched by being wrapped around the edge of the disc. <clears throat> So that arc length there would be the stretch of the spring, right? This would be x. What is theta? Theta is the angle that it rotates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The arc length, s equals r theta, or in this case, x equals r theta. So that x <clears throat> is 0.2 theta. That x is 0.2 theta. Then my only equation, my only unknown, sorry, <coughs> is theta. Uh, it might be a little bit of math. Theta and theta squared and a constant. Use a quadratic formula. But I hope and I expect you to be able to solve here for theta. <coughs> theta is 0.24 and that's going to be in radians. 0.24 radians. You could change that to degrees if you wanted to. But let's take a step back and look at what we did. We determine, hey, this is talking about uh, masses, velocities, moments. This is, there's no collision, okay? If there's collision, we can't use conservation of energy, but there's no collision, so we can use conservation of energy. <clears throat> We've got a really long equation that really only three terms are not zero. And we had two unknowns, and we knew that the stretch of the spring was related to the angle theta that it moved.